Ahoy! I'm Clara and I love ships and naval history. Multiple times on this channel I mentioned British first rate ship of the line called HMS Victory. Well, let's explore this iconic warship, shall we? In 1758, the same year as Nelson was born, the keel of a new first rate ship of the line was laid in Chatham on a river Medway. Admiralty asked the king to pick the name from the list of names for the ships of Royal Navy for this new ship. And the king decided that she would be victory. But this name wasn't on the list, because the last warship of this name sunk with whole crew on board. And so they thought that the name was unfortunate. At the beginning of Victory's career, it seems like that, because before Victory was launched, the Seven Years' War ended, and the new first rate ship wasn't needed anymore. So Victory was abandoned in the dockyard after she was launched in 1765, and her fate was uncertain. They even considered to broke Victory up, but in 1778, HMS Victory was finally commissioned and sent to Channel Fleet as a flagship of Admiral Keppel. He was a commander-in-chief of Channel Fleet. Under Keppel, Victory took part in her first battle, the Battle of Ushant on 27th July 1778. In this battle, Channel Fleet faced French fleet from Brest and it ended up indecisively and sparked some controversies in Britain. So Admiral Keppel was replaced and Victory sailed into her second engagement under Admiral Kappenfeld. The battle took place on 12th December 1781 near Ushant again. So it was called again the Battle of Ushant, but sometimes it's called the second one. This time, Channel Fleet captured approximately 15 ships of French convoy and none of the ships from the convoy reached their destination. So it had been quite a successful mission. A year later, Victory fought another battle. She was a flagship of Mediterranean Fleet under a flag of Admiral Ho this time. Battle of Cape Spartel, uh, that's the name of that battle, ended up indecisively and definitely didn't help Spain in their siege of Gibraltar, which would be unsuccessful. In 1793, revolution was already taking over most of the France, but there were still places where they supported the monarchy, even when King was already executed. And one of those places was Toulon. Citizens of the strategically important port invited Royal Navy to take over the part of French fleet which anchored there, and also bring British corps to protect the city against the revolutionaries. When Napoleon Bonaparte took command over the revolutionary corps, the strategy of the siege of Toulon changed. Napoleon decided to attack the ships of Royal Navy instead of the city. Ships were forced to retreat from Toulon, and they needed to take the British corps with them. But before they retreated, Royal Navy was able to destroy most of the French warships which anchored in Toulon. Siege of Toulon was Napoleon's first great victory, and he chose the Mediterranean fleet under the flag of Admiral Hood, who hoisted his flag on the HMS victory, as his enemy. Well, on the 14th February 1797, Mediterranean fleet, now under Admiral Jervis, who, as everyone, hoisted his flag on our dear victory, met with Spanish fleet off the Cape St. Vincent. Fleet sailed parallelly to Spanish fleet, when the wind turned into the favor of Spanish ships, so they decided to sail behind the rear guard of Victory's fleet and encircle it. Spanish fleet got unlucky because Commodore Horatio Nelson guessed their intentions, sailed out from the British line and attacked the Spanish flagship. Well, Victory's fleet won the battle, probably thanks to the quick decision of Commodore Nelson, and the commanders of Mediterranean fleet became known in Britain. But for Victory, it was supposed to be the last battle, because in the same year she got out of service. 
she had an age for that. And Admiralty considered to make a hospital ship from her. But that never happened, because another 100 gun ship sunk and Royal Navy needed to quickly replace her. And what was quicker than build a new first third ship of the line? Repair the old one! And in this case, that lucky ship became HMS Victory. She even got an additional 4 guns, which made her 104 gun ship, and that meant that she became the strongest warship in the Royal Navy. In 1803, she got back to service as a flagship of Mediterranean fleet, this time under the flag of Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson. Until the spring of 1805, nothing happened, but then, the French fleet from Toulon sailed from port, merged with Spanish ships from Cartagena, sailed to West Indies, and then back, and at the end they anchored in Cadiz. Nelson's fleet obviously chased them, but they hadn't caught them, so they needed to wait in front of the Cadiz till the Toulon's fleet doesn't decide to sail out. Nelson on the HMS Victory sailed to Britain to get a quick rest. While he was there, he also perfected his strategy for upcoming battle. And this long-awaited battle took place off the Cape Trafalgar on the 21st of October 1805. Nelson divided his fleet into two columns which sailed vertically towards Franco-Spanish line of battle with the intention of cutting their line. HMS Victory, head of one of the columns, broke the line behind the stern of the French flagship Le Bicentel, and eliminated her from the battle for some time by only one full broadside. But Victory got entangled into another French ship, 74 guns left at the top, this ship might be small, but if HMS Temere with 80 guns wouldn't help Victory, Lege du Tab would probably force Victory to surrender. Unfortunately, one of the muskets ball from Lege du Tab hit Nelson and he died after battle. But at least he knew that the Mediterranean won. After some repairs in Gibraltar, Victory was damaged a lot from the fight with Lege du Tab. She sailed to Britain with the body of Nelson. Crew would revolt if they wouldn't. When Victory got to Britain, she was considered to be old and stayed in the port without any use. But that lasted just until 1809, when she became a flagship of Baltic fleet and stayed there for another three years. She was just irreplaceable. Victor returned to Portsmouth in 1812 and was left there. In 1838, Admiralty wanted to break her up, but the second sea lord, Admiral Hardy, who was her captain in the Battle of Trafalgar, decided to make her flagship of second sea lord. Victory stayed in this role over a hundred years, and then the first sea lord hoisted his flag on her. Today, HMS Victory is a flagship of first sea lord and practically the whole Royal Navy. She is also a museum ship and oldest commission warship in the world. Well, that's a brief overview of career of HMS Victory. I know that this video has been a bit longer, but it's impossible to compress the history of this iconic ship into less time. I hope I'll see you next time.